Morning potato chips, we put from across the shock and you're very welcome to the channel and I've got a really enjoyable video for, well for me because I've got a knife that I'm probably very late as far as knife reviews go on this knife, the home front and this is a Ken Onion design made by CRKT which for the last couple of years, I've always wanted, but never actually pulled the trigger and bought one because I thought, that's eh, maybe a wee bit too gimmicky for me. But in reality, I have gimmicky knives. I have guy knives with different actions, different different specifications to them than your average run-of-the-mill knives. This is just amazing. I, I'm so sorry I've waited so long. Because not only is this, um, a gimmick is the wrong word. This is a knife that has features that no other knife had at the time. It was the first of its kind. Um, and the home front, what that does to me, that sends signal to my brain. Saying about the war and people who were left in the home front and things like that. So it, it, it already gives that impression in my head of the home front. It looks like an American GI's knife. And as a little boy, that's all you ever wanted was a GI's knife or a, a, a weapon or whatever. Mine, it was cowboys and Indians and things like that. But having a, having a soldier's knife was a big thing. So whether it's something like the silly old age, once you get past your 60th birthday, you start to reminisce on your youth. And it's true. But this is the sort of knife as a, a young man, a young child... I just would have adored a lovely rubber one of these because it looks classic. And to be honest with you, the shape, the form, it still looks classic. It still excites me. And now that I've got it in hand, this is the aluminium version. It comes in different versions, but this is the aluminium with, you can see it's like chevron sort of patterns on the, on the handle here. The full bolster, what I would have called the American star, which was the sort of the, the sign you've seen on the jeeps and the tanks and the war movies that used to be a really highlight of any young boy's years when the next war movie came out. So you've got a flipper that looks like the sight of a rifle. It's just, and I, 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 can, I can actually hear the words I'm saying, but sometimes in our collections, just being knife collectors, we like things that are a wee bit different. They're probably... Never going to be our favourite knife on our collection, but they are for a collection. And for a knife lover like me, I like all kinds of knives. As you know, if you followed my channel, absolutely everything. But this, as a functional knife, is absolutely brilliant, I have to say. Honestly, look, I haven't put it to a huge range of hard use. It's locked down. I'm in the flat. I've cut cardboard and I've cut bits of paper. But just... It functions really well. I can't see any reason. Look, when you've held as many knives as sort of reviewers do, you can tell whether a knife is going to be half decent. I can't swear that it's going to be the best cutter in the world. It's Aussie blade steel. But in my, in my, and I can only speak for me, for me, Aussie is a really good budget steel. It is. It's just a good, like ECR 13, don't poo-poo all these steels because... For what you're going to use in your average daily use, they're absolutely fine. An easy sharpen, Aussie it takes a wicked edge. So this has come, and I've I've just used this for a couple of cardboard boxes and things. I'm just going to show you, it's still like a razor. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it functionally. But let me just tell you, look at that. Look at that blade shape. You can look at that blade, you can see Ken Onion. But what you can also see, it actually looks like a commando's knife. In my, in my eyes. Now, I could be looking through rose-tinted glasses, but it looks like a commando's knife. Everything about it, the colour, the shape of the blade, the, the full blood groove, whatever people used to call them. Not factual, but, you know, it's a blood groove. And it's there just for aesthetics. But look at the shape of that knife. I love the fact that it's thinner here, comes out to this bulbous middle and back up to the point. It is just stunning. Really, really is a nice looking knife. And all the way around, it's got a the backspacer here. It's got a deep carry pocket clip. 
It is finished impeccably. CRK2 do a great turnout in their lives. They, their fit and finish is usually good. I can't find any real fault. There's your lockup. It's a liner lock, and it's a good, solid liner lock. Good, solid lockup. There's no wiggle whatsoever in this blade. And I mean nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Um, no movement. And this is a knife that you can take apart in 30 seconds, if that. If you want to go really fast, probably quicker. You can take it apart in 30 seconds. There's no screws. And look, I may be saying this to people who know, but this is for somebody who maybe doesn't know what the home front is. It's a Ken Onion design. He designed this feature. He has improved it, and I have another one coming. That's how much I like this knife. Now, this was provided to me by Tactical Knives UK, which is the new um, store over here in the UK. Um, if you go to my last video, you'll hear all about the store, and they have a knife that you can win. So, what you do at the back of here, it's like a little wheel, but it looks like it fits in with the, the backspacer. All you've got to do is oh. <laughs> did I just say it was easy <laughs> I'd tighten that up so tight but the nice thing about this is you can tighten it up tight and it doesn't matter so you open it fully you hit this little switch here and there you go your knife is apart in three you can wash it out you can clean it out you can you don't need lube because it's plastic washers. Basically, that's what it is, plastic washers. Everything is stuck in there, so there's nothing to, to lose. To put it back together again, just get your blade, set it back in, get it in the right position, push down, put this back on here, clip it in, hold it tight and firm there, and then just do the reverse on this here. So all you're doing is pushing backwards to get it to go back in. You just push this little clip down, perfectly centered, and it happens every time. <laughs> do you know, knife companies have struggled with getting blade center, and over time and memorial, they just suffer. This, I'm getting apart, I'm throwing it on the ground, I put it back together, it is in the perfect position, it's not the best flipper in the world, but you only literally need a little, like, look, that's it. It flips out. I love the sound of it when it, what do you hear this? Oh, that didn't really do that well. I was holding it. I love that. <laughs> but it's really, really just amazing that Ken Onion can come up with something as good as that, that retrieves a blade after it, fully centered. And it happens every single time. It really does. I don't know how many times I've done that. Perfect. So, as a gimmicky knife, and I'm using, again, I'm using that word uh, tongue-in-cheek because it is a real good function knife. This is a hollow grind. This is coming down to a really good edge for a working knife. You know, it's not 10,000, but it's, it's a really good working edge, a sturdy blade, no movement up, down, anywhere. None. I just couldn't believe how good that could be for what you've got in your hand and what I've just done to get a knife so solid. It's a full, you know, it's got a full grip. doesn't matter what size your hand is. I have a medium large hand. Look at that. Plenty of room left over. But it's lovely. It's about a three and a half inch blade. It weighs about 4.8 ounces. So, I mean, it's not a light knife, but it's by no means heavy. And it just works. It's just, it just works. And if you're going camping or you're going out or you, you've got the kids in, you want to get somebody in their teenage years excited about the knife world or somebody over 60 like myself, <laughs> bring this out, take it apart and let them play with it because this will convert you into a knife lover in my eyes. <laughs> I just love it. So let, let me give you a couple of comparisons of knives that I've got in my collection that they're never going to be the best knives in the world, but I love having them in my collection. And one of the first is this, another aluminium knife. This is aluminium. This is in 14C28N, the Kershaw Blur. I'm not a speed safe lover. I love this knife. I love the speed safe on it. Again, I love the traction that they put on this. I don't know why this isn't used more in working knives, but you've got a recurve. You've got everything that 
a lot of people don't say they don't like. But when you put this in hand, let me tell you, this is an amazing knife. So, you know, putting them side by side, they're about the same size. Actually, the home front is a little bit bigger. Let me just get them neck to neck here. The blade in the home front is about the same. The handle is a tiny bit longer. But another beautiful example of a knife done well. Curse you doing a knife well. Here's a CRKT that I have in my collection. I've had it for years. And the reason I've got it in my collection, not because it's it's HCR 13, it's not the best steel, it's a bit gimmicky looking. This was my Flash Gordon knife that I would call it. But it has a button lock that is just absolutely perfection. It's just beautiful. And no matter how high end you go, I don't believe you'll get a button lock that's any better than that. So I have it in my collection for a button lock. And I don't, you don't have to spend a fortune for it. None of these knives that I'm showing you are huge in price. You want a work knife. There's a rat in Oz 8. And if you've got the rat in Oz 8, you'll know exactly how good Oz 8 is when it's done correctly. And again, look at the blade size. The rat is longer in the handle. And it's probably about the same size in the blade. But another great working knife. And it's a knife you want in your collection. So we've got speed safe, we've got recurves, we've got button locks, we've got the rat, which is just the fundamental work knife. And then here's something as we're going up. I mean, this is running about £100. You get 10% off if it's your first order if you go over to Tactical Knives. So it'll take it down just under the 100 Here's another one, the Aileron from Benchmade. And I don't have a whole lot of Benchmade black class. But this, I just thought, was brilliant. It's a super blade. It has traction up here so that you can pull the blade out. It's a There's a, a self-defense boy who designed this, and it's for pulling out so that you're facing your opponent. I'm not sure. I, well, I know I'll never use it for that because I don't knife fight. But it's a beautiful knife, and I think it's a great working knife as well as, they say, a self-defense knife. To me, it's just a big working blade. It's a great big handle on it. I can get a good grip. There's no movement. Everything about it is great. So there's knives that I have in my collection that in and of themselves, they are not world beaters, but they're different types of knives in my collection. All but this one are really, really good work knives. Either one of them I could take out and know I can do a day's work. And I'm not going to struggle to sharpen them because the blade steels are all off that elk where you can sharpen them quickly. This is S30V which is my favourite steel if you want for a work knife. But these are just particularly great knives to have in a collection. Another work knife. So the knives don't have to. Here's the um, GEC 71 Bullnose. An amazing work knife. Again, the blade, the blade length is not that short of any of these knives. Not that short in any of them. And it's as good a work knife as them. But it's complete. it looks completely different. It wouldn't put you in mind of something that could do as much work as these. But in my, in my life, it can. So, our collections are made up of different knives that we like the look of. We have certain ones that we want for specific jobs. But a lot of it is just what you like the look of. And is it different? We can talk about different knife blade steels. We can talk about the different shapes. We can talk about emotions that the knives will give you. So don't think you have to buy Chris Reeve, GEC. You don't. There's so many different brands out there. CRKT and Kershaw make an amazing range of knives that are just interesting. Interesting. Um, and I've put some of them in front of you here. But every company will have a knife that's just made for um, aesthetics or for looks or to invoke something in a knife person. This is just a small selection of ones. I have plenty more that do that. Um, but this is just a wee selection of mine that, you know, go out there. Don't be stead and follow the trend. You can get, I mean, I'm years late with this, but I'll have so much fun and so much enjoyment carrying and using that. And know it's in my collection. And bring it in into future videos. Don't be scared and think you have to follow all these trends. You can't afford to keep up with all them trends. You'll always be behind and you'll always feel like you're behind. At the moment, there's too many. So let's yeah, let's not stick to them. I don't know. I, I'm tired of Civivi now. There's so many. And they're starting to all look the same. And they, and they will do because they're from the same company. 
and they'll they'll hit on a a blade shape that's that's selling and they'll replicate that and they'll change and tweak wee tiny bits so why would you want to keep up go for something completely different spice up your <laughs> i think i think i'm gonna break in the song spice up your uh your knife collection get things that are a wee bit different and enjoy them for what they are you know they're not the best deals in the world who gives a damn they'll cut and do everything that most of us want to do who gives a damn what the steel is? Let's get it out of the system. 1095. It works every bit as good as any one of these. And it sharpens easy. That's what you want. That's what you want. So I'm gone. Paddy's giving you his lecture. This home front is an absolute winner. If you've been thinking of one for years like me, just get one. I've actually got the new model where it's just a one click separate rather than doing the back as well. Then look, there's no harm doing that. But I've got the one click coming because I just want to see how Ken Onion has progressed in developing his knives. And if you're in the military and you're out in the sand, the sandbox, this is a super knife for the sandbox. You can bring it back, take it apart, get the sand out of it. I'm telling you, this is a deployment knife in my eyes. But I'm not that experienced. I'm not a trained killer. I was in the Navy, so... <laughs> Naval ratings with guns or knives are dangerous at any time of the year. Never mind your special forces. Give a sailor a gun or a knife and watch people run. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Paddy's away. Cup of tea time. Bye-bye.